Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Archihax. And today we're going to go over 30 really useful Rhino commands. So the first one is cell previous and cell last. So these are two very similar commands that allow you to restore your previous selection. So for example, you're working with this little geometry over here. So if you've accidentally lost certain selection, what you can do is type in the command cell prev, and this will pick up whatever that you were selecting right before what you're selecting right now. There's another command called cell last, and this one actually picks up the latest geometry that you have created. So I'll create a box over here, and as you can see, it's not automatically selected. And sometimes it's gonna be like somewhere really off and you, you're not able to see it. What you can do is you can type in the command cell last, and it'll pick up that geometry over there. Another thing that I use daily or almost every time I'm modeling is some kind of locking and isolation mechanism. Now, isolate is pretty good, but isolate makes all the other geometries disappear. So for example, yeah, now I lose all the context. So if I just want to focus on one geometry, this is pretty good. But other times I just want to have some context to other geometry. So in that case, what I do is isolate lock. So instead of hiding everything, it'll just lock all the other objects around it. Sometimes you just want to lock whatever you're working on and work on the context. So in that case, what you can use is called lock swap. And as you can see, you know, it just switches the lock state between the whole scene. And of course, if you want to unlock something, you can just type in unlock and that is good to go. And then just pretend like this is the window, right? But you know, sometimes it doesn't kind of capture the idea of the window very well. And what you can do in this case is use set object um, display mode. So I'll type in the command set object display mode. And then the mode I'll use ghosted. Now, as you can see, the object becomes semi transparent and you're able to see through that particular object. Next up is patch slash mesh patch. So this is extremely useful when you're creating a topography. So for example, you might have, you might be given like a, you know, very weird topography, you know, series of lines, right? Okay, now if you're given a data like this, like what do you do, right? So this is a part where you might want to use a command called patch. And this will give you a little option like this that allows you to um, add in the number of ISO curves and you can actually preview what the results gonna look like now sometimes you have to be a little bit more accurate so as you can see in the corner over here we're not quite touching this um, point over here it's not hitting all the edges because there's a bit of a default smoothing going on so in this case if you don't mind having a pixelated like a low poly look the alternative to that is called mesh patch and that allows you to select all these things and then boom. Another thing that is very useful is called solid point on. And so you can see over here, you can see these little dots forming at the corner of each of surface. And that allows you to freely manipulate the shape of the object. Okay, now next up, sometimes um, you're gonna be working with a sort of a complex geometry with like double curvature and sometimes you might want to like you know do something with each of these edges right what you can use is called dupe edge and this allows you to pick certain edges like this and then it produces a copy of the edge in a line and this is going to be exactly matching with the lines that you have picked so this can be really useful and as a bonus, on top of this, you can also use the command called dupe border. And this allows you to pick up a whole face. And so pick up a whole face and then copy the whole, uh, you know, the border, the edges that kind of encapsulate that whole surface. Now, next up is record history. So this command is also a lot of fun. So for example, so what this does is that it allows you to kind of remember what command you're applying in the geometry and then allows you to continuously make some edits. So for example, and I'm going to type in the command called flow, for example, and I'm going to take this object and flow it along this surface or this curve over here. Then I'll press enter and then I'll 
put it into the target. So this is a target curve. So what this is going to do is um, the flow command will... The base curve is going to be here. And then let's choose a target curve. But now, every time you want to make edits to this little um, like polyline, you might have to repeat this command, right? But if you have recorded the history, you're not able to dynamically edit this curve. Now next up is called purge. This is also another one of my favorite commands. Now this command allows you to just sort of get rid of any useless um, objects and resources in your Rhino file. So what you can do is hit this command and just hit yes on all the options. And as you might have guessed it from all these um, options, they will get rid of whatever object that is not used in the scene. So if I hit enter, you can keep an eye out on the layer side over here. Boom. As you can see, all the layers that didn't contain any um, information just got removed. And same goes for material, textures, and groups, and so on and so forth. Now, next command is called split face. Now, as you might have guessed it from the name, it allows you to grab a face like this one, and then allow you to split it into however many segments you want. So for example, I'm just going to draw a cross over here and then hit enter. And as you can see, the face has been split into multiple segments along those lines. Um, what you can do in Rhino is you can start assigning colors to different objects. So for example, let's say these guys are red, right? And now you can do cell color and then choose a target object. So in this case, I'll just grab this one. As you can see, all the geometries that are colored with red get selected. Now, next one is called Splop. And this one's a really fun one. So let's see. So this one's really hard to explain by words. So I'll just show you exactly what it does. So I'll type in the command Splop. And I'll choose this object to Splop. And the centroid is going to be right here. And I'll draw quick sphere like that and now the target surface is going to be where I'm going to be splopping this little surface as you can see the little point is sticking directly to the surface that I'm targeting and the object sort of morphs dynamically along the curvature of the surface and as you might have noticed the geometry is sort of getting deformed along the curve of the surface if you don't want that to happen you can just enable this option called rigid and it'll make sure that the geometry stays exactly um, straight. Now let's go to, and speaking of dealing with many objects, what you can do is just select all these guys that you want to organize and type in the command distribute. Okay, there we go, distribute. And then you can choose the direction that you want to distribute them in. And also, you can also choose a spacing, so add a distance of this much. And put the direction of this much. And as you can see, the objects are sort of like laid out, like spaced out in an equal distance. Now, it's happening in a direction that I've specified, but the problem here is that they are sort of off in a y-axis, right? So in this case, I'm going to use a command called align, which goes hand in hand with distribute vertical center there we go okay now all the items are aligned vertically so if you go to the plan view you'll see that they're exactly in line like that and they're spaced out evenly we'll take a scene like this and then choose write the command called distribute then let's do it yeah spacing will keep it the same and the direction will be like that now they have been spaced out. Now I'm going to type in the command called align. And then let's do vertical center again. And boom, look at that. Look how neatly organized they are. This next command on the list is called selection filter. There we go. And once you enable that, it'll give you this little floating window that allows you to kind of filter out whatever you can select. So. So now my selection is no longer able to select poly surfaces because I have disabled this uh, option. Now next up on the list is merge all faces. And I think it has been renamed recently to merge all coplanar surface. So for example, if I boolean union these, 
there, there are, you know, so many ugly lines, you know, there's a lot of ISO curves and there's some leftover um, edges from the previous geometry. So if you want to clean this up and make it into a smooth surface, what you can do is you can type in the command merge all coplanar surfaces and boom, sort of joined into one smooth surface. Okay, next up on the list is called selection using by brush. Now this is also a really fun one if you have a very uh, large scene with organic distribution of things. What you can do is you can type in the command cell brush and this gives you a little brush that you can paint on as if you're in Photoshop and whatever this brush touches will be selected. Now next up on the list is set point. As you can see, um, these geometries have a different height, right? They're all distributed in a vertical space and I want them to all land flat on the ground, right? So in that case, what you can do is you can use the command called set point. So set PT and then just deselect these and just choose Z and then hit OK. Now what that does is, oh, we actually flattened everything too. I will take the bottom of this and then set point, right? And then set it to Z, boom. What that does is takes all those like uneven points, like the surface was like kind of like curved and all that, but makes it perfectly flat and then puts it, sticks it directly onto the C plane like that. Now, next one on the list is view capture to file. You probably used this before. Um, this allows you to take your current Rhino view and then save it as a file. And this is a good alternative to just using it um, using a render engine, this is much faster. Of course, you don't get a, as good of a quality as using a full-fledged render engine, but this sometimes has like a nice diagrammatic look that you might just actually be okay with. So in this case, so I'm gonna, I just turned the whole viewport into Arctic, and then I'm gonna type in the command, view capture to file. Now, if you capture the file, it gives you this little pop-up where you can set up different kind of settings. So you can also increase the resolution. If you just scale it up, you can get a really high definition version of it, even if your monitor is tiny. And yeah, once you just hit enter, it'll ask you to save it somewhere. And that'll be like an exact replica of the scene. Now, this is this goes hand in hand with named views. So you can save a view like this one and then always come back to this this uh, specific angle. I've just created a little room over here. And what you can do is use the command called create solid. Boom. And then select the surfaces that kind of capture this little void in the middle. And what that does is it just generates kind of like inter trims all the surfaces away and then leaves you with the inner core just like this one. So when you create little text in Rhino, there's no spell check by default. So if I do, let's say, I love Rhino, but without an H. So this is obviously wrong spelling, right? Also, I have it enabled already, so I get the spell check. So if you try it on your computer right now, you will see that they're not going to give you a suggestion like this one. Okay, yeah, the command is called test toggle spell check on annotation text. It's a pretty lengthy one. I'll put it in the description so you can copy and paste it into your Rhino command. And you can turn this on and off by running this command. So, uh, and uh, yeah, the other thing is that you have to restart your Rhino for this to take full effect. So keep that in mind when you're trying to enable or disable it. Okay, next up on the list is called Cut Plane. Now this is also a really fun one. Um, sometimes you have to cut really large or small geometry and it's kind of hard to, you know, get exact um, plane to trim it and what you can do is use the command called cut plane and simply draw a line that bisects the area you want to cut and it'll give you a plane that is just the right size to cut that geometry so now I can use this to trim either one either sides like that and the next one is called rebuild so let's say I have a little plane over here right you can run the command called rebuild and it'll give you It'll ask you for how many um, points do you want to have on your surface and the level of degree, these interpolation will happen and you can actually preview what that looks like as well. So I'm gonna hit okay and as you can see, 
My surface looks almost subdivided, but not really. These are just um, isocurves. And now if I enable solid, solid point on, which I described earlier, you're now able to edit specific parts of this plane, just like that. Okay, let's do make 2D. And then go to the top view. Now it captured that perspective in line format. Now there's a way to um, draw an outline across over like specific parts of these geometry. So for example, if I don't want to have the plane part of it, I'll just uh, deselect that. And then let's say I want to draw outline around it, right? One way to do it is actually picking up each of these lines individually. But a really quick way to do that is by using a command called curve boolean. And now once you've enabled it, you can just simply click on the outside area of the geometry. And then boom, as you can see, Rhino draws a outline around the, all the curves that you have selected. Okay, and the next stuff on the list is trim. Allows you to edit 2D lines or just lines really quickly by trimming away the little edges. So that's really useful. And if you don't want sharp edges like this one, what you could do is use a command called fillet. And this allows you to add a specific radius to it so that you can have a nice refined corner at wherever the lines meet. Okay, there we go. So yeah, quick way to add some curvature into your design. Now, zoom selected not only allows you to kind of like put your camera in the right spot, so it also puts the centroid, like wherever your camera target is, in the middle of the selection. So you're now able to orbit around the objects that you have just um, zoom selected towards. Okay, and the next up on the list is camera. So speaking, now that we're in the topic of views, now sometimes you might be lost as to exactly where your camera is located. And in that case, I like to use a command called camera. Now camera, once I run it, I can either choose to show or hide it. Now I'll choose to show the my perspective camera. And as you can see in other viewports, there's a little camera object that is shown and I can actually um, like move this camera around and it dynamically updates the perspective camera that I have in the scene. And if you want to get rid of it, um, you can run the camera command again and choose to hide it. Okay, and the next up is called Max Viewport. So this allows you to quickly jump between different viewports and maximize it so that you can fully take advantage of your screen real estate. I personally have it added to my keyboard shortcut so I can use it in um, really timely fashion. The turntable, which many of you might have already heard. So a turntable allows you to just rotate around, you know, exactly where your camera is lo located and, you know, kind of gives off a little fun um, three-dimensional view of your scene. Now to spice this up a little bit, you can run a hidden and test command called test rand color. Now what this does is it assigns a random color to all your geometries and every time you move around it's gonna change the color. So now what you can do is you can combine this with turntable and you get to create this crazy party scene with a bunch of strobe lights and of course you can also speed up and s slow down as much as you want. So those are 30 commands that we have went over. Hope you found at least a few that is going to be useful in your day-to-day -day experience. And um, yeah, and if there's any commands I've missed that you really enjoy, um, share with everyone and share with me in the comments. And I would love to learn something new as well. Okay, so thanks for sticking around all the way to the end of the video and um, happy modeling. See you guys later. Bye.